I'm uh, Yogi Srinath. I'm an uh, associate professor of chemistry here in the, in the de Department of Chemistry at MIT. Our uh, research really focuses on understanding how to use electricity to rearrange chemical bonds. Um, this may sound a little abstract, but in reality this is a central problem for how we transition ultimately to a renewable energy economy. Um, as many of you know, the last 10, 15 years have witnessed really unprecedented rise in uh, low-cost, deployable, renewable electricity sources like solar and wind. Um, the rise of these technologies have even dwarfed what many in the academic community thought would be possible even five or ten years ago. And, and this actually places a brand new challenge and also an enormous new opportunity, which really relates to how we take the energy that comes from the sun or the wind, store it when we have a lot of it, release it on demand when we need it, and ultimately how we actually use that electricity to transform all the other things that we do in society. How we um, make materials, how we make uh, chemicals, how we um, uh, clean up the environment, um, how, how we really deal with all the other pieces of the world that, that chemistry touches upon. And, and so, so, so for so long, the history of kind of the chemical world has been rooted in using fossil fuels as the initial source of energy. And in the future, that will no longer be the case. It will be these renewable energy sources that have grown to dominance um, that will play a central role in how we do chemistry in the future. And, and that relates ultimately to how we're going to be able to transition to a far more sustainable um, and, uh, and economically prosperous uh, energy economy. Um, when you have, uh, an yeah, so my, my interest really in, in chemistry in and, and in energy problems in particular started pretty early on. I mean, I. I, I was always very environmentally conscious in general, but I think that this really was sparked my interest um, uh, in, in my undergraduate time period and when I was a graduate student here at MIT. Um, and uh, it's in that time period that I really realized that there was a very, very need, great need um, for rethinking how we do chemistry. Um, and, and that was rooted in an appreciation that, that the future energy landscape will look very, very different from the past. Uh, and for me, at a very, very fundamental level, I find it extraordinarily exciting and, and awe-inspiring that you can use electricity to do chemistry. That, that's something that, that you know, there, there has been knowledge of in broad brushstrokes for well over several centuries, um, but we're only now having the tools to really be able to use electricity and control things at the atom-by-atom atom level. And that really offers enormous new opportunities in terms of how we uh, deploy and use electricity to do new chemistry. Um, so my background really started as a graduate student here at MIT with Professor Dan Nocera. I just worked um, in the building a stone's throw across uh, uh, the, the courtyard here. Uh, and uh, now my own labs, it turns out, are in the basement of the, uh, in the first floor and, and on this floor of this very building. Uh, I then did a short postdoc at um, University of California, Berkeley as a Miller Fellow um, and was extra extraordinarily fortunate to be able to come back to this wonderful place, uh, MIT, to be able to launch my independent research program. Uh, and uh, it's been an absolutely amazing experience um, and one that uh, I, I, I know will be the foundation for an extraordinarily exciting um, uh, career over the next several decades in this burgeoning and important area. MIT is a fantastic place. Um, I was really fortunate to be thinking about a number of different institutions to come to, but at the end of the day, what really made MIT um, uh, second to none, really, is the combination of people who are at the top of their research field in so many different areas aggregated all in one place. Uh, and that combined with an inherent collaborative spirit at MIT makes it an ecosystem unlike any other for innovation. Uh, one of the things that uh, I can say that has personally touched our research is the, the almost seamless ability to be able to take the basic science that we do that's on the level of an electrode material that's maybe only the size of a millimeter by a millimeter and then present that chemistry and that new science to um, someone across the way in chemical engineering who can take that same technology and turn it ultimately into a device that can ultimately go into a next generation automobile or a next generation chemical process. So that entire um, uh, process of innovation is something that's really only possible at MIT. And it's only possible because you have strength all across that value chain of innovation. The other thing I would say that really adds to that 
is that when you have scientists and engineers and um, people who know about the techno-economics of things all in one place, you have enormous synergies that also feed back into the basic science. Uh, one of the things I often found is, is unfortunate sometimes is that academia can, can very much live within a bubble where we focus on problems because that's what our colleagues in academia are focusing on. Uh, but at MIT that's just never really um, possible to do and it's really uh, beautiful that we have the opportunity to look outside of our disciplinary sort of um, um, silos to understand where the real problems lie. And many times that actually builds into it new fundamental science challenges and new research directions that we would never really thought to pursue if we didn't have an ecosystem around us to find those challenges. Uh, and so that, that really has been, for me, uh, extraordinarily gratifying at a basic science level. And it's also in the long term really meant that our, our science has a much greater likelihood of making a huge impact at a technology level and, and ultimately in the marketplace.